Turbines Incorporated is a leading designer and manufacturer of accurate and reliable turbine flow meters. Turbine flow meters are precision instruments for accurate and reliable measurement of oil, gas, and cryogenic liquids. What we're going to be talking about today is the TMG 0200 turbine flow meter, which is designed for gas applications. We will discuss the assembly, the disassembly, the materials of construction, and we'll show you how to put this meter together and how to take it apart. So what we'll start with is the meter bearings. Bearings are made out of 440 series stainless steel with a Teflon retainer ring. The retainer ring is there to add some lubricity because operating in gas environments can be quite dry. So we need to give these bearings the ability to turn and that's what this Teflon retainer ring does for us. Next we'll move on to the rotor. The rotor is 17.4 stainless steel. You'll notice that it has an N etched on it and that's the way the flow meter was calibrated. We need to make sure that we assemble the rotor appropriately with the N etched on the housing as well. The remaining components of the flow meter, the cruciform, the snap rings and the housing are manufactured out of 316 series stainless steel. The snap rings you'll see here have a couple of purposes. First and foremost, they hold the internals into the housing. Secondly, they serve for anti-rotation so that the internals cannot turn once they're located inside the housing. What I was just holding up there was our cruciforms. You'll notice the cruciforms serve a couple of purposes. They hold the internals in the proper location inside the housing and they also give us some flow straightening as the gas moves towards the rotors. We want them to hit it in this particular way for optimal performance. Secondly, on the ends of the cruciforms you'll notice the cones, there to increase the velocity of the product moving through the internal parts of the housing and this gives us a low pressure zone which allows our rotor to balance properly between the cones and minimize friction. So now what we're going to do is move on to the housing, 316 series stainless steel as mentioned before. You can see there is a groove inside the mouth of the housing and that's what's going to tell us where to locate our snap rings. So what we'll start with now is the assembly of the internals. You'll notice that you can clearly see the ball bearings here. So what we're showing you is that we're going to put the ball bearings face in, into the rotor. And we're doing this to protect the ball bearings. We're going to expose the retainer ring and protect the ball bearings as much as possible and you'll notice that I just pressed those in with my fingers. Sometimes a little bit more pressure is necessary but don't use anything but your hands to put those bearings into place. Further, the inside of the rotor goes to the shaft side of the cruciform and that should slide on fairly easily. And then the other cruciform fits directly and you'll see that there's a location for the shaft to come across into the cone and that fits right on top of the rotor. Now we will locate our arrow and make sure that the inside of our rotor on the shaft side goes to the inside of the housing. That slides right inside and sometimes there might be a little friction there but make sure you can just push that in with your hand. Now we're going to locate the snap ring and as we discussed before there's a channel which will allow us to put the snap ring in its proper location. You can slide that in with your hand quite easily. And then what we want to do is make sure that we align the end of the cruciform in the groove of the snap ring which is going to help us with our anti-rotation as we discussed before. So, we flip it over and we go about it exactly the same way on the other side. That just goes in with a little push from your hand, it will snap right into place and you can see that the internals are now locked in place and in the right location in the middle of the housing like we want. So now what we need to show you is how quick it is to disassemble and take the internals out. All you're going to require is a standard flathead screwdriver. The smaller ones work a little bit better, but pretty much any size will work. You have a little lip at the end of the snap ring that you can locate and pull up on. And once you get the snap ring pulled up a little bit out of the groove, you can use your hand to pull it out the rest of the way. And then the internals will easily come out of the flow meter. So what we've shown you is what the parts are, what they're manufactured out of, how to put them in, and how to take them out of the housing. For additional information or immediate expert advice, please contact Turbines Inc. to speak with one of our local field engineers. Call us at 800-809-1387. That's 1-800-809-1387. Or visit www.turbinesincorporated.com.